Well, hello everybody. John and Eric here at the new workshop. We have a Tormac lathe video for you guys. We're going to take this pin. It's a pull-out dowel pin. It's too long. We need to make it shorter. So we figured the lathe is going to be the fastest way to do it. Eric kind of wanted to have a race. Me do it on the lathe, him do it on the grinder or something. But chips is usually better than dust. So we'll start with that. He's disappointed. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> So, interesting thing, Eric has run the lathe by himself a little bit, but he's never like changed to call it, so we're going to go through that real quick. And I'm going to teach Eric how to um, kind of manually part this thing off. We could do a code for it too, actually. First of all, hit the um, call it open closed button. Perfect. Pneumatic call it is open. This should be able to spin now. So you got to hold that. And then unscrew this. Hold up. This is the little key. So pull that out and rotate it so that the thing is up top. And now it should be able to spin. Oh yeah. Yeah? Is it still really tight? It should be pretty loose. It's snug. It goes until you hear it unclick right yeah. there. Does it come out? Close. So we got our half inch collet from the Tormac collet kit. Just putting it in, there's a key inside so it has to go a certain way. Right there, that slot. How far in does it go? Uh, until the threads catch on the draw tube. You might have to kind of jiggle that thing. There you go. Now it's going? Yep. Good stuff. All right, test the rod in there. Nice slip fit. Okay, so that's probably the loose setting. Hit the um, draw bar open closed button. You're kind of supposed to take this arm off, but whatever. It should be good. Is it tight now? It doesn't come out? No. Yeah, so for this purpose, that's tight enough. Okay, so we've got Eric here with the jog pendant on the Tormac screen. We just zeroed the Z about where the tool touches. The work piece, we're doing this all manually, just just for training purposes. And then just doing the Z down. So we were making the cut and didn't really seem to be doing much and it turned out it was kind of getting a chamfer because it was pushing the rod itself in. So I guess the collet wasn't uh, tight enough. Quick and dirty collet tightening procedure should have been a little bit less quick and dirty. <laughs> so what I like to do when adjusting this system is um, put the rod in. You tightened it a little bit already. Yep. Um, we got to not forget to get this key back, back to the locked position and then twist it a little bit forward or backwards. There you go, it locks into place. So hit the... Um, I lost it. <laughs> that's okay. It's got threads, right? Yeah. Hit the draw bar. See, and how it didn't go all the way now, so Eric's made it too tight. He's made it one or two settings too tight. Mm -hmm. So I like to get it just so the air, air cylinder is just strong enough to pop it into the locked position. Because you can see there's these cams in here that have to ride up the cylinder and onto the flat. And right now, there's just not enough air pressure to get up onto that flat because it's too tight. So we gotta back it off a click or two, and then we'll be good. Perfect. So we're just gonna click this guy into the lock to, if you can uh, loosen. There you go, now it's locked. So, Perfect. So now it shouldn't move. Because basically it's hardened steel, so we were pushing the part into the collet. And now, since we don't really know what length we cut it down to, we should measure it. We got some new fancy Michitoyu calipers, dial test indicators, digital micrometer, half-tenth measurement, 
the good stuff. So you took off 50 thou, 49 thou. It was one inch exactly before. Oh, there we go. So 49 thou is what you've taken off so far. All right, so in our little testing scenario, we were going kind of slow RPM, like 2,000, uh, 1,500 RPM, and it was squealing like crazy, and didn't know if to go fast or slow or whatever, so jump into our favorite calculator, G-Wizard calculator. Go down. <laughs> so in the G-Wizard calculator, I've got it set up for the Tormac 15 ounce Slam Pro Lathe. I chose a medium carbon alloy. I don't know what the pins are made of, but just for fun, I chose kind of hard steel. Um, I didn't define that it was hardened, so maybe I should do that. But anyway, carbide insert, half inch diameter, 20 thou cut depth, and uh, it says 3,500 RPM, which is maxing out my lathe, 20 inches per minute, which is a really fast feed rate. So in testing, <clears throat> just manually, manually turning it over here, cranked it up to 3,500 RPM, and uh, did a pretty fast cut. No more squeal. It cuts so much nicer, and made these really cool like. Mm -hmm. Pale blue chips. I think that was a 10 thou cut, whereas I told you it was a 20 thou. And it was on fire, which is kind of cool too. So I think at this point we can make a quick little code. Um, how about I teach Eric how to do that? All right, let's do this. Over here? Oh, yeah, code at the machine, not at the computer. We are doing, let's get the X diameter close. It's a tube, so the center point doesn't really matter so if you can move the X down to about where the turp top is just get it close yeah call that X um, first let's change the to tool 2 not tool 11 uh, so go to the MDI and just click T2 make it better perfect 0.51 it's it's already set <clears throat> all right you didn't change the z just now nope so that's where we're at we still need to go to 201 you said right yeah okay so we'll go to conversational uh od which one am i looking at face right here wow well, what? Give all me your thoughts. It all looks German to me. You've never seen this? Nope. Alright. Um, tool number two. Z end is how far you want to go in, which was? Point negative. Two negative uh, point two oh one. Yeah, it's the mini keyboard that doesn't have the uh, number key on the side. Yeah. Okay. Alright, what's the next? Initial, Initial X. X. What's your diameter? Point five one one nine. Yep. Final Z, take it down to zero. Sometimes if you're facing a piece, you actually want to go past zero because um, a radius to insert needs to go past. But this is a tube, doesn't matter. Z start, where are you starting at in your Z? Right there. Right there. So we've already cut it down to negative point one one. So type that in there. Start there, yeah. And then tool clearance, I don't know, 10th out, doesn't matter. Roughing, roughing is uh, 10 thou passes, we could do 20, I guess. Sure, and then finish of 5 thou. These are just, I'm just guessing these. Yeah, 5 thou, not 50 thou. <laughs> okay, and so lately I've been training Eric on the mill, so we're used to like inch per minute feed rate, whereas on a lathe you can do inch per revolution. So every turn it's going to move 15 thou, and then 5 thou and lit. Even I kind of have a basic understanding of that, I'm not super familiar with all that yet. Um, and, and your surface feed per minute, SFM. I guess we can look at G-Wizard, see what it tells us. It says 594 surface feet per minute and an inch per rev of 5.8 thou. So we can use those numbers, plop it in. That should be a nice, fast, hard, aggressive cut. I'm just changing the side menu numbers. Finishing, make it, uh, yeah, that's about fine. Okay. It's about the same as the roughing. 
And that is how you write code. And then you click post a file. Huh. Not bad, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I can understand why you always say lave is quite easy to write. It is. There's two axes, and we'll, we'll look at the code afterwards once you save it. Uh, call it something different. Because it's not an OD turn stop pin. Mm. Just call it whatever you want. It's a temporary file. You might not want to lose the NC, NGC at the end. Nah, that's not true. <laughs> Pin short. <laughs> nice. Alright, so in the beginning of the code, if you scroll down, the G30 is a safe position. M8, M3, cool and on spindle on. And then it just organizes the passes right here. Hmm. I mean, that's your pass. Is move to position, cut, r retract, move back to position. Just pass after pass after pass. Hmm. It's not hard. No. You can see here in the code, it's just those lines. Does that mean no? Yeah, I'd, uh, and how did that you stop right there? Just, just so you know. <laughs> Why, you think this is the first lathe code I've written? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're an expert at lathe code. <laughs> All right, ready? I'm ready. I'm not. Go. It's going to move to safe position. Coolant's going on. Oh, That's okay. That's all it took. <laughs> that was a lot faster than doing it. Yeah. Step by step. Wow. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Three, four passes. So now we can take it out and measure the actual distance. There is a burr on it, probably? Yeah. Maybe? How hot is it? Just stick your finger on it. It started turning bronze. <laughs> but left it with a pretty nice finish. It's a little um, bowed. No, mm -hmm. maybe that's just the inside. The burr on the inside. Yeah. I don't know how close I can get with this GoPro while keeping it zoomed in. Or focused, I mean. So there is a burr on the outside. We could chamfer it with the mill right now. Is it okay. hot or? No. Not at all? No. All the heat in the chips. That's what you want. Take her out. So, or we could put a chamfer coat on it. Right. All right, we're going to play with that. We'll come back. So we made a quick little chamfer coat right there, doing the same process, just guessing at a few numbers. Eric's going to run it. I'm going to film it. All righty. Ready, go. Hover that e-stop. <laughs> Might not have been enough of a chamfer, we'll see. Yeah, maybe a little bit more next time. Oh, big oh, first oh. cut. You didn't zero it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric forgot to set Z0. Yep. So the first one was a really big cut. That's okay. It did it. <laughs> So now, because you hit that, we should uh, home X and Y, mm -hmm. X and Z. Eric E stopped it. That's fine. It's a good learning experience. Yeah. I mean, you need to do all this stuff. You need to crash. You need to break tools. You need to figure it out. I've certainly done my fair share of that. And it is so simple. It's like one tiny little step will just screw everything up. Yeah. Good to go. Tweak the code a little Probably. bit. Made it a bit shorter. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Ready. Yeah, the way the automated things work is they, uh, it just goes to home between tool changes, okay. between different codes. It scared me. But yeah, well, it took 32 seconds and 15 minutes to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, though. This is all learning. This is why we're here. So, yeah, the chamfer left a pretty nasty burr on the end there. That's tweakable, no big deal. Ideally, like, if I was hand coding this... I would chamfer it and then do the facing pass, or go from the center line, go up, and then out to chamfer it. Um, 
so that's okay. Eric's got some sandpaper. We can manually uh, tweak this up. Pretty good stuff. So how do you feel about using the Tormac lathe? Pretty good, yeah. yeah. It's fairly easy for someone who kind of didn't want to get into doing the CNC and the computer work and all that and hopping on Fusion the other day for a couple hours and then hopping on this. It's, it's doable. I'm excited. Good. I'm excited too. It's really nice to have Eric being able to work on these machines. I mean, with a little bit more practice, he'll be totally self-sufficient on all this stuff. So that's pretty fantastic. Our capabilities have just grown right now. So we do have a lot of lathe projects coming up in the future. We've been putting it off. We've been in the new shop for like three or four months and I don't think I've actually used the lathe yet. So we've been putting off a lot of projects. So we're gonna do them and hopefully we'll film some of them. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.